a male in his 70s, presents to his GP feeling unwell with a history of breathlessness and has a chest x-ray. What are the findings? Let's go through the case. There are two main findings on this x-ray. Firstly, we can see this is a PA film, which means unlike an AP film, assessing the heart size is more reliable. Now, there is some debate regarding the usefulness of a cardiothoracic ratio. However, a cardiothoracic ratio of more than 50% is a simple and quick way of identifying patients who may have an enlarged heart in the right clinical context. If we divide the maximum dimension of the heart by the maximum dimension of the chest, we can see this is well over 50% here, suggesting a large heart. What's more, there are signs of left atrial enlargement. Have a look at the carina. Normally, the angle between the right and left main bronchus should be less than 90 degrees, and here we can see it has increased. Have a look to the left of the descending aorta, and we can see a faint outline here which is well defined. This is typical for left atrial enlargement. If we look at the subsequent CT, we can see how this contour arises. Now there is another finding on the film. I like to assess the lungs themselves in terms of zones, to try and avoid missing any subtle nodules. So let's take the upper zone first, then the lower zone, and then the middle zone. And if you look carefully, you'll see a small nodule on the right. Now I like to invert the film to make sure I'm not making it up, and this also shows us the nodule. If we look at the CT, first we will see there is some paraseptal emphysema, and then scrolling down we'll find a nodule within the right upper lobe. This has solid and ground glass components, so it can be classified as a subsolid nodule. Going back a couple of years, we can see the patient had a CT then, and over time, the nodule has become more dense. A nodule that starts life as a pure ground glass nodule and slowly becomes larger and more solid over time is suggestive of a lung adenocarcinoma spectrum lesion. Lung adenocarcinoma is the most common subtype of lung cancer. The previous classification of adenocarcinoma involved the term bronchoalveolar carcinoma, however, this was discontinued in 2011. Now, the term lipidic is important in the classification of lung adenocarcinoma. Lipidic growth means that the tumor cells proliferate along the surface of intact alveolar walls, but without any stromal or vascular invasion. So we can broadly divide lung adenocarcinomas into those where lipidic growth is predominant, i.e. the less invasive ones, and those where it isn't, i.e. the more invasive ones. In terms of adenocarcinoma, where lipidic growth is predominant, we can further divide these into three groups. Firstly, adenocarcinoma in situ, which is a tumour less than 3 cm with no invasion. This shows on CT usually as a pure ground glass nodule, but can have a small solid component. Secondly, is minimally invasive adenocarcinoma, and this again is less than 3 cm, but has some stromal invasion less than 3 mm. This time on CT, there is a small solid component to the nodule, which represents the invasive part. Then thirdly, lipidic predominant adenocarcinoma can be of any size and has more than 5 mm of stromal invasion, and these usually have a larger solid component on CT. Once lipidic growth is non-predominant, you are then dealing with invasive adenocarcinomas, of which there are many subtypes. One notable one is the invasive mucinous subtype, which can present on CT with multifocal consolidation and multiple nodules and masses. This can be fairly aggressive. So these nodules start life as an adenocarcinoma in situ and typically grow solid components slowly over several years, which is why the British Thoracic Society in the UK recommend following subsolid nodules which have ground glass components for four years to make sure that they are stable, unlike more solid nodules, which are usually followed up for just two years. Going back to our case, a PET-CT showed FDG avidity in the lesion and nowhere else, so no nodal or metastatic involvement. A CT-guided lung biopsy confirmed the suspicion of lipidic predominant adenocarcinoma. The nodule was successfully resected before it had a chance to metastasize. So this x-ray shows the importance of reviewing the lungs in zones to make sure you aren't missing an incidental nodule. And once you see a subsolid nodule on CT, look at any previous scans to see if it has become slowly more solid over time, in which case you could be dealing with a lung adenocarcinoma.